he was always a kind of a very interesting figure, even during his life. You know, he garnered a lot of respect within the profession, both here locally and internationally in his prime. People around the world recognize, especially through the Little Strand House and the Little Strand House Foundation, that you know, there, there is great architecture of a certain period here in the islands. Asipov had this innate understanding of the microclimates of Hawaii, and so when he would design a house on the beach, it'd be designed completely differently than how you design a house up here in the mountains. And it was this ability to kind of tune a building to the environment that connected people with the place. If you were to design a building with small openings and insulation and air conditioning, there's kind of no reason for it to be in Hawaii anymore. Hawaii is surrounded by this significant beauty. And if you're going to be living here, you know, you might as well embrace the natural world around you, whether it's kind of a small suburban site or a site like this with spectacular views. He, he treated them the same. He gave people this opportunity, the users inside of it, to open their homes up to the environment. He reveals the site or the place of the, of the building to you through your experience. His architecture, I would argue, can even heighten one's knowledge of a place through these moments in time. So he didn't just design a building or draw a floor plan, he actually imagined an experience. He was aware of how you would arrive um, and, and how you come down this, this private path and suddenly you, you arrive at the house. So, you know, his thinking, I think, you know, really reinforced the special uh, qualities of the place. So the surprises are not just in nature, but it's also the architecture, right, showing yeah. itself. Over time, through undergrad and grad school, became really familiar and, and visited as many of his projects as I could and kind of, you know, declared myself the uh, president of the Asipov fan club. I think, you know, I've tried to see as many of his projects as possible and try to, you know, learn as much as I could from all of them. There was always one project that I had heard about but had never known anything more about it. Um, in 2007, when uh, Dean Sakamoto wrote the book uh, Hawaiian Modern about Asipov's work, he also um, co-produced a film that had these short little segments of home footage uh, shot by Howard Lillistrand um, up here of the Ossipoff cabin. And they didn't mention it, you know, where it was. They didn't mention the significance of the project. They just kind of had these little home video clips and talked about Ossipoff's sensitivity to climate, Ossipoff's Japanese uh, cultural background and uh, experiences there. And, you know, to me, it seemed like this project was significant, but it was a mystery, you know, what happened to it or where was it? We are at the summit ridge of the Waianae Mountains above Nana Kuli Valley, a place generally referred to these days as Palehua. So we're at about uh, 2,500 feet in elevation in the clouds, looking over the leeward side, the leeward coast, all the way to Makaha. This old cabin was built in the early 1950s by Vladimir Osipov as a family project, a retreat, a place to come up with his family and friends for weekends and they kept it until uh, the mid-1970s. He built it over time and brought up you know, his staff, contractors to come help him to bring materials up there or just find materials around it to build this little mountain retreat at Palahua. And he was also an avid camper. He called himself the quartermaster uh, for these camping trips he did with uh, his guy friends. Uh, and they would go camping to you know, Molokai, uh, Big Island, uh, and, uh, and he would set up the camp. He would always set up a, a kitchen. And uh, he seemed to enjoy doing these things. Uh, I, I was told that he would show up at the campsite with a, with a framing hammer and a sack of nails and he would set up a kitchen um, and actually do all the ordering of the food, the wine, the drinks. Uh, and so it was kind of a very elaborate camping thing. And, and I think the uh, Palihu was kind of a reflection of his love for nature. Asipov is mostly known for his polished finished projects, right? His residences that were built for, you know, kind of the, the rich and powerful of the 1950s and 60s. And so these like highly polished buildings, you know, a lot of his residences are like that. And even his like larger public civic buildings are like that. They're these kind of very finished, you know, masterpieces. And Asipov also wasn't someone who lectured or spoke about his philosophies. 
So everything that we take from his work is really just best guesses or kind of drawing our own conclusions about why these projects are significant. I think this building, Ossipov's cabin here at Palihua, is probably the most significant because it was a, you know, a shoestring budget. There was no client. There was no one else that he needed to answer to. There wasn't anyone else he was trying to please. There wasn't anyone that he needed to, you know, render this building in, in this polished fashion in order to sell an idea. To me, I think that this building is significant because it's his sketchbook rather than the finished oil painting. If you look at it, it's all of these moments of exploration and experimentation and prototyping that really is an evidence of his thought process and what he found important and what he wanted to build on this small budget, on this site of and this piece of land that he did not ultimately own at the end of the day. It was his chance to try things out before putting them into these larger buildings that we all know him for today. Certainly, we are aware of Vladimir Osipov and his contribution to local Hawaiian architecture, and that this was a place that he built by hand is just obviously special. Personally, I, I appreciate Hawaii's history. Both uh, ancient and modern history are Im important, I think, to understand where we are today. When you see something that is unique, uh, and that has a special meaning to the history in Hawaii, it's your responsibility to care for it and to maintain it and to make it available so other people can appreciate it and hopefully get a better idea of the roots of our culture as it has evolved through time in Hawaii. One of the incredible things about this place um, is that, you know, this was just kind of the cherry on top of the whole Ahapua that the Gill family is in charge of. And, you know, they're mission and their goal is to really restore this whole hillside back to its native um, ecosystem. And so this cabin, though it was something important to them and something that they wanted to you know, preserve and protect and share with people was something that they didn't really have um, the time to kind of really pull the resources, you know, design team and all the proper um, carpenters and you know, preservationists uh, together. But because they started sharing this place with the community, skilled craftsmen and carpenters and architects and artists all kind of you know reached out and said hey we'd love to help in any way we can there's a draw to this place I and mean, it's not just that it's a beautiful spot but it's i think it's this legacy that um you know of Asipov and the legacy of the teachings that you can pull from this place that really like brought the community together this is a historic cabin in the middle of a conservation district uh, our mission up here is to preserve the environment, the conservation resources, the historic resources of this mountain so that they can be shared for future generations and hopefully provide a kind of emotional or psychological anchor for future generations so they know where they came from, they know the heritage and the history of this place. And if they come to this spot and they love this area, they will work to protect it for generations beyond. I think the greater goal of looking at a figure like Vladimir Osipov, who was truly committed and, and certainly capable to merge the natural environment with the built environment, is that hopefully his legacy will help us to shape a better built environment today and in the future here in Hawaii. I could spend all day talking about abstract ideas and how to do things right, but Many people that don't understand architecture, you know, th those concepts will just go right over their head. But if they can come up to the, one of these places, Ossipov's Cabin in Palihua or the Little Strand House, and see those principles, see those abstract ideas in action, experience them, view them, walk through those spaces, they can still get the value out of it. They can still say, you know, that is a nice view. And this house captures that view, it connects that view. Everyone can appreciate the beauty of, of nature, um, and not everyone can appreciate the, the um, complexity of how architecture might capture that natural view. But without these spaces, without these buildings here, we would just be waving our hands in the air talking about abstract ideas. <laughs>